Thomas here, and I know uh, some of you have been wondering how it is I bend PVC, because in this day and age, uh, in reef keeping and aquarium keeping in general, uh, we've come to a point where we like to not only appreciate what's in the tank, but also have a little bit of fun with the filtration, especially when it comes to sump systems. We start doing things like using colored PVC to either color code things or just spice things up so when you open up the cabinet to work on your filtration or clean something up or do maintenance, you know, it's pretty. And uh, I'm a big fan of that. So uh, one of the ways we can kind of enhance everything is by not using as many elbows and rather uh, bend the PVC itself. Now, it's, uh, it can be a little bit challenging. It's definitely uh, a lot more tedious than it would be to just use elbows. Uh, there are hurdles to get over, like uh, taking measurements and then factoring in how much of a curve you're going to have to bend the PVC in or how tightly you can actually bend it. Um, and uh, how much extra PVC that requires, because it's not just two angles like this joining up at a 90. Now we've got all that extra material to make that bend, so on and so forth. So um, rather than getting into all the crazy measurement parts of it, I'm gonna show you the uh, exact method in which I bend the PVC. And there's really two different methods I use. Uh, first one is to heat up the PVC and then put something inside of it like a reinforced pond tubing that has a spiral of hard wire that runs through it. Uh, that way when you bend the PVC, the tubing inside of it uh, doesn't allow the PVC to collapse. And then the other method is the sand method, which you throw a cap on one end of the PVC, throw a cap on the other end, then you heat it up and you bend it. And the sand inside of the, the tube at that point provides the rigidity so that it doesn't collapse on itself. And now I'm going to uh, show you how to heat up PVC properly so that you don't burn it. And then I'll burn it on purpose just so you see what that looks like. So let's get started. Okay, so what I use to heat up my PVC before bending it is just a simple, this is a Tac Life heat gun. I got it on Amazon. Uh, it was fairly inexpensive. I think it was about 20 or 30 bucks, something like that. Nothing crazy. Uh, I have it set to the highest temperature setting. On this one, it's just seven. It doesn't tell me what temperature that is. It's just the highest setting it's got. And then it's got three uh, settings for how much air it's actually gonna blow at the end of the gun. I usually just keep it on the strongest one. However, uh, if you're working with thinner walled PVC, uh, you could easily go down a bit if you're worried about overheating it or uh, burning it by accident. So what you wanna do to prevent burning the PVC, this is just a very dirty piece of PVC, um, is you want to go back and forth over the PVC. I'm about an inch away when I do it and just go back and forth while you're heating it up and then slowly rotate the PVC as well. You want to get the entire section of PVC you're going to bend um, nice and warm and pliable. And I'll go ahead and do that now so you can see it. I'll probably speed it up in the video here so you don't have to sit through the whole thing, but this is basically what it looks like. Okay, now you can see the PVC is quite bendable. Uh, it's very flexible in all directions because I heated it up on all sides nice and evenly. But here's the problem, you go to bend PVC and it immediately starts to kink, right? So even at a 90 degree angle over what is a pretty pliable section of PVC, I mean, it's really hot right now, but you can see uh, it's squishy all the way up to the ends where I was heating it, but it just, it's not gonna wanna bend evenly. Um, so that's the issue you face, which is why throwing a piece of tubing down the center of it is going to help. It'll help prevent that kinking from happening. So I'm going to grab a piece of tubing, throw it down, and then bend it, and you'll see exactly what I mean. So here I've got my reinforced tubing. I put it down the center of the PVC. It fills it up actually quite well. You can see it's in there all the way to the end. And now when I bend it, it doesn't kink. You can actually see that with it bent right now, it's taken some of the ribs of the tubing 
and adopted them. And that's just because the PVC is so pliable at this temperature. But now the tough part is actually retrieving the tubing. There you go. So there you go. There's a bent piece of PVC. I used the tubing. I've done a couple of the bends on my system over here with that exact method. And you can't even tell. All right, so for method number two here, I'm actually gonna show you on a piece of uh, PVC I'm gonna be bending for my system behind you there because I already have it capped off. So what I've got here is a PVC end cap uh, on the pipe. I've already got a small section bent. Um, and there's a PVC end cap on the other end. All I did was fill this tube full of uh, clay sand. Um, so this tube right now weighs a heck of a lot more than it normally does, but that's because, and you can, maybe here, there's a little bit of space, but it is completely full of sand. Uh, so what I have in front of me here is just a short measurement of where the PVC uh, starts and roughly where I need it to be bent to. So I'm going to try to uh, heat up a small section of the PVC here and bend it so that it is facing up where the circle is. Wish me luck, because this is honestly a very tight bend and I'm not entirely sure this is gonna work well, but we're gonna give it a shot. One thing worth noting, uh, whenever you have it filled with sand to do a bend, uh, it can be a little, uh, a little bit tougher to get the PVC to come up to temperature just because the sand is going to act somewhat as a heat sink. So you actually take a little bit more time to heat it up, uh, but the sand inside of it heats up at the same time. And uh, what happens is I find it actually gives you a little bit more time to work that bend in before the PVC starts to uh, cool off again and hold its shape, uh, which also means you have to spend a little bit more time holding the PVC in position. Uh, but the nice thing is having that extra time uh, gives you the opportunity to make sure the PVC is sitting perfectly where you want it, uh, so it's you know perfectly at a right angle and perpendicular to your previous bend or whatever it is you're trying to accomplish with it. I'm starting to get some flexibility in the PVC right about now, so I'm going to Give it a go in just a moment. I want to make sure it's nice and, yep, yeah, nice and ready to be bent. So I need, that's a heck of a bend up there. I don't have to do it. I'm not looking forward to this. There you can see it's getting floppy. Okay. Let's see what happens. Wish me luck. Ooh. Sometimes I like to give it a tap to try and encourage the PVC to uh, there. So you can see I'm getting a little bit of bulging on the sides. The PVC is extremely hot, but sometimes what I'll do is I'll use a piece of fabric to uh, protect my hand and then try to bend around it. So you can see I got the bend there. It's got a little bit of a bulge. Uh, it's not perfect. The nice thing is you can always reheat and try again. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. But you can see now how the sand really helps to keep the shape. Considering how tight that bend is, it really didn't uh, become too misshapen. So what I'm gonna show you next is what not to do to PVC and why uh, heating it up improperly is gonna result in essentially just burnt PVC. So let's go ahead and almost start a fire. Here we go. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and have some fun and uh, burn this PVC. So this is why you don't want to just leave while you're heating one spot on the PVC. Because if you just heat it up too much, and you can overheat PVC as well. So I'm going to do this very, very purposefully by just not moving the PVC pipe at all. But this is why you have to be careful not to over or, uh, overheat the PVC by moving it around. 
It's uh, maybe easy for some of you to tell, but it's actually already starting to get a little yellow, but I'm gonna keep going just to emphasize it. And you'll see how little time it actually takes to burn PVC versus bend it. I already got a nice burn mark started. It takes a lot longer to heat PVC evenly to get it ready for a bend than it does to actually just burn it. And I'm gonna call that officially burnt. All right, so this is what happens when you burn PVC. It's only smoking just a wee bit, but it's bubbled, it's deformed, and uh, although it's really hot in that one spot, the PVC everywhere else really isn't that warm. And I mean, I can bend it now. It's warm enough to get a little bit of a bend going, but unfortunately, it is just burnt. Looking down the inside of the tube, there isn't really anything to show for the burn on the exterior, but when what we're trying to do is make a really nice, slick looking uh, filtration system, this is not how you want to do it, especially if you spent a bunch of money on, you know, nice uh, colored PVC, which is a lot more expensive than just your average white stuff from the hardware store. So uh, you don't want to do that. Don't do it. It doesn't take long and it looks like garbage when you're done. Well, I hope this video helps you understand how it is I bent PVC and the methods I use to do so and how you might be able to do that yourself at home. Uh, if you do have any questions, though, feel free to drop those down in the comment section below. I'd love to get back to you if you have any suggestions for how you bend PVC. Maybe we can start a discussion down there. How do you do it? Give me a tip because for me, it's all been trial and error and there has been some error, let me tell you. But I think I got the hang of it now. System's coming along. I should have this finished sometime today and hopefully have the video of this system fully plumbed coming at you real soon. Uh, and thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please sub up. I'm going to have all kinds of cool projects started. I have even uh, another little project I might be picking up this weekend. I, I found something I want and it's adorable. Anyways, uh, so there will be another video coming on that too. I think I made up my mind. I think I have to get it. And I might need your help with a name. We'll see. Anyways, uh, thanks so much for watching and check back often and I'll have some uh, more fun stuff to do. All right, take it easy.